You ready to get into this bolo show? <laughs> yep, I'm ready to rock. You ever you ever go to Jacksonville, Florida? Yeah, I've been to Jacksonville a couple times. Duval, right? You ever listen to the radio stations down there? Yeah. Duval. <laughs> yep. It's a bolo show. Either way, let's just roll the intro. What's going on, guys? Welcome to the latest edition of That Bolo Show. This is Jack and Brian from Simple Man's Comics, where we're going to talk about all the new comic book day releases this week. We're talking about those first appearances, reader buzz, variant buzz, and, of course, Jack's long-term play. But real quick, before we get into that, this show is brought to you by slabbedheroes.com. Get those guaranteed nine eights at a great price. Plus, he also has those store exclusives and raw books, so make sure you check out slabbedheroes.com. Jack, how was your new comic book day? It was good. Unfortunately, not as much comic books as I would like, but um, got to spend the early part of the evening kind of checking out the market, seeing what's going on, seeing uh, what's been moving today. So I'm excited to talk about it. Yeah, I actually got to read some books today. I even read a book or two that wasn't on the list that may or may not bring up. We'll see. Don't know if there's enough time, but also make sure you stay tuned to the end because we have another giveaway we, you know, we talk indie comics on this book a lot. We have an indie publisher that has donated some books to this channel, great friends of this channel. So we have some of those books and we're going to give them away to you. So stay tuned to find out how. But that being said, we're going to get right into that BOLO list, which stands for be on the lookout for those that aren't aware. But either way, first appearances. This week was kind of heavy on first appearances, huh, Jack? Yeah, yeah. It was heavy on first appearances, but... You know, it's another one of those weeks where I just feel like there's a quantity lot of over first, quality. Yeah, it's a lot of first appearances, but uh, you know, we're gonna get into them right now with that first one being Savage Avengers number ten. Yeah, so you get kind of like a a, a voodoo spirit kind of character. Um, yeah, this is another one. I don't know what Savage Avengers. If we're talking about, we're talking about first appearances. Most of the time, we're talking about people who are looking at them from a collectible standpoint. And, and, you know, it's really kind of hard to have an opinion. And I say this on the first one because I think there's going to be some duplication as we talk about a few of these. It, it's very hard to project um, most of the characters that come out today because it just seems like we talked about 2019 being like the year of the random first appearance. It seems like we're going to continue to get that in 2020. So um, this character could be something, could be nothing. It really all depends um, it's going to need somebody later on to take them and use them. But, you know, uh, I, Savage Avengers is a pretty consistent reader buzz title. I will say that, though. The, the title is quality. Um, as far as the first appearance, really, who knows? Your guess is as good as mine. Next one we're moving into is that Green Lantern Season 2, number one. We talked about this one in the last call. This also has first appearance of the Young Guardians, correct? Yeah, cameo. Um, people are going to argue this one. Um, it, they'll they'll definitely the next issue we'll hear that call the first appearance as well um but young guardians uh is kind of a promising team uh i think a lot of the green lantern related teams because it's kind of like a faction oriented book while i'm not a big fan of team appearances i will say green lantern related team appearances i'm more bullish on sinestro core um uh, green lantern core uh you know, the Red Lanterns, you know, I think all of those, um, I think all of those are going to have their time in the sun and, and be quality first appearances to have. Um, this Young Guardians team could be something positive. It, it's, it's a wait and see, but it's better than most, I will say, that get released on the average Wednesday. Right. And then moving on, we have another first appearance in Flash number 88 with Paradox who looks a lot like other characters we've seen before, right? Right, right. But this was the one character, I'll say, who had mainstream media, not even mainstream media buzz, but comics media buzz coming into um, new comic book day. Uh, there were a lot of articles run for this issue came out uh, talking about this character. So I think there was a lot of talk amongst collectors, investors, speculators, flippers, um, we started to see those questions. I even saw a question on one of the Facebook groups I'm in. I don't even remember which one it was where somebody said like, 
do flash villains ever pan out as an investment? And, you know, we've seen in recent times some of these flash villains actually be solid short-term investments. Um, characters to come to mind are like Godspeed and Bloodwork. Um, both did very well. Both are cool characters. Unfortunately, the CW kind of used and abused them real quick. And, uh, and that kind of affected their secondary market values. We'll have to see if they end up in movies later. Um, and we'll have to see if this is a villain of the week or a villain that's going to be consistent. But you're right, Brian, the kind of character design overall is a bit redundant. Then moving into the next one. I can't even say this was a straight face, but in Immortal Hulk number 31, we get the first appearance of Glow Boy. I didn't read this issue. I don't know who this character is. Um, I chuckled as much as probably everybody else who read the list um, when I saw that this was going to be a, a first appearance. Um, she actually, you know, I think we've seen some pretty ridiculous names in comics over the years, but usually a name gives you an indication of staying power. So if I yeah, may as well to, just put a red shirt on him. Yeah, if I was trying to be uh, a Nostradamus on this one, I would say. This is, we're not going to be talking about Glow Boy 10 years from now. Well, if he turns into Glow Man, then you got something. Yeah, maybe. Or Glow Worm. But then this was a big title this week, and we got the first appearance of, what, the Gwingers and Gwen Stacy number one? Yeah. And this is what, I mean. So, yeah, first appearance we can kind of brush over, but we have it in other parts of the list. And like we say on this list, we usually name the title once. So we can talk more about the reader buzz part of it, and then it did have some cool covers for it, right? Yeah. So the first appearance is, is laughable, I think, at best, right? It's kind of a Gwingers. comedy. It's kind of a comedy thing. But at the same point, um, this was a big release. This was a big release. It, I got to be honest with you, it's not one. I feel like, I feel like we've talked about these kinds of releases before. Um, I will say Black Cat. I read late and I felt like it is, it is a really well-written book and the J. Scott Campbell covers have been um, getting even better and better, but they've been consistently good. Um, but a lot of these releases, they come out and I feel like no matter what Marvel wants to say, the reason they're telling the story, they're telling, they're coming out of this book for variant covers and they didn't disappoint. I mean, these covers are amazing. This is kind of a like Baskin Robbins, you pick the flavor that you like, which we like here at Supplements Comics, right? We're buy what you like. Um, and we can all have our own opinion on which cover is best, but there are some absolutely amazing covers, some ratio variants. Um, but this was a heavily ordered book. A lot of retailers went big on this one to get those ratio variants. Um, and there were even, I think, some uh, some store variants for this one. So, but this is a this is one I think that uh, will have its time. Um, and these, a lot of these variants are going to be uh, in a lot of people's PCs. Right. And I think issue number two might be hitting final or cut off this week. So stay tuned. We might talk about that in the last call show. But also with issue number two, another channel sponsor of ours, Frankie's Comics. They just had, what is it, a Ji Hung Lee variant? Yeah, Ji Hung Lee variant um, that featured Ghost Spider on the cover, which uh, it, within 10 minutes they sold out of their Virgin cover sets. They still have some trade dress available for, I think, $15, but that's one to really keep your eye out for because it's, it's hard to predict the, uh, the variant market when it comes to these retailer exclusives. But every now and again, a cover comes out that's just so stunning that people just feel like they have to have it. And this one's kind of trending in that direction. Yeah, and Frankie's, I know, has been turning people on to one of their partners that also carries them in Golden Apple. So uh, check there they might, if they're not sold out as well. But big shout out to Frankie's channel sponsor. And big shout out to Ghost, uh, Ghost Spider because that just goes to show that that's one popular character right now. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, the, the, the cover art is great, but it, it's the cover art combined with the character. I'm telling you, that is my number one character as far as I think the future of the comics market. Then the last book we have for first appearances this week is X-Force number seven. We don't get a name, but we know it's like basically a build from Domino. Yeah, it's like anti-Domino, uh, uh, kind of a um, negative Domino, um, you know, uh, Marvel loves these types of stories, right? The uh, the almost doppelganger, the 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 antithesis of the character. 
but uh, yeah, so we don't have like a name to, to like call this character. I, again, I didn't get to check this book out myself. I, I was able to read it. Did you? And I enjoyed it. I, but you all know, I'm not a big X, X-Men fan, but mm-hmm. there's always one title that I tend to like, and that's X-Force. And so I read this one. To me, it read like a Domino story, but it wasn't Domino. And the, right. Domino's trying to track down what's going on. Domino's trying to figure out why she why she's having some bad luck lately. And then this other domino is basically getting all the good luck and like doing these like kills or taking out these people that, you know, the way domino would get perfect windage. I mean, the luck's hitting her way. So domino's chasing down to find out who it is and then kind of gets close towards the end. And then they, they revealed this character with no name, but it's basically almost like a Jason Bourne, James Bond type story where she, it's a chase chase scene trying to get an assassin. But it was good. I enjoyed it. That wraps up the first appearance section. So now we're going to go right into that reader buzz. Then the first book we're going to talk about on the reader buzz is another Boom Studios book that seems to get a lot of reader buzz lately from Boom. And we're talking about Alienated number one. This didn't have the buzz that we've talked about in previous issues from Boom, but it was a decent story. I'm not as high on it as I am with some of those other titles, such as Folklore, It's Once and Future, but I still enjoyed the story. It's kind of like a Paper Girls, Stranger Things type fun story. It just didn't have the appeal that I normally like. Yeah, I want to reread it. Um, Brian, you and I read an advanced uh, PDF copy, and we both kind of had that same the same kind of reaction, right? That we liked it. Um, but I, I, I think we're getting a bit jaded. Um, 2019 was Boom Studios really crowning year in the industry. Um, they've been around for a while, but it's the year where they really stepped up. And as far as kind of a creator yeah. owned. They kicked, cre- yeah, sorry. I was gonna say they kicked creator owned in the ass this last past year. Yeah, and they, you know, it's, it's a cop out to point to like their properties like Power Rangers and to say like, well, they, you know, they have those when you're talking about like market share percentage, because the reality of the situation is that the driving sales force in 2019, it was once in future, it was something's killing the children. It was uh, folk, folk lords, um, you know, Red Mother and these great creator owned books. And I just think, like I, like I said, we're getting maybe a bit jaded a bit. Um, well, even yeah. Pixar has a, a movie that doesn't perform as good every now and then. Right, right. Doesn't mean so, it's a bad movie. <laughs> but I, I looked at a lot of like the alienated reviews were very, um, very high. So I feel like maybe I'm just, I need to reread it. I need to reread it, maybe give it or, some time. Or and, I always say maybe we're not the target demographic. Who knows? And that's the case. And that's the beauty of comics, right? That's why I tell all my friends, regardless, you would like comics. And then when they say, oh, no. It's not my thing. I say, you know, well, there's something. Do you like movies? Because it's like movies. There's something absolutely for everybody. Um, and you're right. Not everything is targeted for everybody. Yeah, I think a lot of people still, when they think comics, they think big two. They think superheroes only. They think yeah. they don't realize how much media is out there. I think a lot of people start to come around because comic books own the box office. So people absolutely. start going, oh, let me look at this. But either way, I agree with you. I'll probably read it alienated again it is going back to a second print we talked about it it was hit final cutoff last week so it's one to keep an eye out for and it has true reader buzz for it yeah next one we're talking about on reader buzz is that wolverine number one facsimile edition we have talked about facsimiles i'm more of a fan of the facsimile over like the true believers but either way here we get wolverine number one Right. And, you know, this is another classic book. This is one of those ones for me where it's like, I love the facsimiles. I would, I like them better in the books that are more unattainable. Um, Not that like this, even this, like, you know, as a kid, this was an iconic book, right? Well, I like this also because I couldn't afford a 180 or a 181. So this was like next in line with that, for that four issue Wolverine miniseries that came out. So like when I started, when I started um, first collecting, you know, the first thing that my brother and I um, like targeted as like books we had to get was this book. This was like the book for the same reason. You know, the Hulk 181 seemed like a silly thing at the time. I didn't even know anything about Hulk 180, I don't think, um, which is what I should have bought. 
but uh, you know, uh, so this was a big book, but it, this is still a book you can get. Um, I still see it every now and again at conventions, like massively underpriced. Um, so does it need a facsimile? I don't know. Um, either way, it, it's fun to get these books and read. So um, this is a, a, these facsimiles are great. And then I like, you know, Frankie's comics, uh, again, to, to bring them up again. Uh, all, they came out with an awesome variant, um, which I think is cool. I think doing, this is one of those beauties of um, store exclusives. And some may not agree with me because I know the beauty of the facsimile is that it's done like exactly how it's supposed to be. But I kind of like the cool combo with some of these retail exclusives for these facsimiles where it's like you're getting this classic Wolverine story, but then you get this like awesome modern um, art style cover, uh, which is an absolute like killer cover on this book. Then the next one we're talking about on Reader Buzz is Thor number three. I continue to like Donny Cates' run on Thor. I was I had my doubts we talked about it on here because, you know, I'm a big Jason Aaron fan. But Donny Cates is doing a good job. And issue number three is pretty much Thor taking on Beta Ray Bill throughout the whole issue. Yeah, I still don't love the way Thor looks. Um, I'm getting past it slowly. But I still, I still like that more classic kind of Thor look. Um, but, you know, I felt kind of the same way early on in the Venom run where I didn't necessarily love, like Ryan Stegman's amazing, but I didn't necessarily love the look of the art. And I know a lot of people felt that way early with Donny Cates and Trad Moore on Silver Surfer Black. So I think that will kind of kind of come around. But, you know, Donny Cates is an absolute master. And people are already kind of chomping it to bit when we've talked about it. Like, when is that first appearance going to be? And now the anticipation, I know we're talking about issue number three, People are already looking ahead to issue number four and the first appearance of a Black Winter. And uh, um, we're already seeing that one in 25 variant talked about. I expect that one to be a heavily ordered book, but also a heavily active book on the secondary market. Yeah, so I'm curious. Do you think Black Winter is an actual character? Because it almost sounds to me like it's the nothing from the never-ending story. They're talking about the Black Winter spreading or the Black Winter. I'm, I'm curious, but you never know because a lot of times they might Maybe I'm just interpreting the story wrong. <laughs> Who knows? But you know, but you're not. That's the way I felt about yeah. it originally, and then I've seen, you know, but people are people are buying what they're buying. There, there's the uh, but, a lot of they're talking like how they talk about like the first appearance of ego. Yeah, uh, there's a lot of prominent Instagram accounts yeah. who have posted um, that that Thor four book, and I think there's you know that's causing a lot of discussion. Um, within the community about, you know, oh, I got to get my pre-orders in. So I think that's going to be a big book. Um, what, what, whether it's the big book yeah. that we're all anticipating, I, I don't know. He's definitely, Donny Cates is good at building up that anticipation and that immersive story. And, he, and he's doing it so far, especially with, with this Black Winter coming. Then the next book is Pennyworth Rest in Peace number one. Out of the books that I read this week, I would probably say this is my pick of the week just for the story alone. Now, I know when we talked about the death of Alfred at one time, I was pushing buttons saying, that's just the death of a butler, right? But ironically, within the story, one of the guys calls him a butler and some people get pissed off. <laughs> but either way, fantastic story. I mean, touching, great send off. Um, I hope they don't like bring him back right away because then it just kind of makes this book. I hope they never bring him back. I yeah. hope that, that, that it's final. Um, it's sad. But like, we've talked about this before, like the key to taking comics to the next level is gonna be aging our heroes. Yep. We've never been able to do that. In 100 years, 75 years or whatever it is of comics, we've never been able to age our heroes. And part of that, unfortunately, is death. Um, so if, if Bruce is gonna hit a certain age, um, unfortunately, it's gonna require Alfred. And, and it was tragic the way that it happened. Um, I still don't necessarily believe that that issue will be anything more than maybe like a 10 to $15 book just for importance, key sake. Um, but the, the Pennyworth RIP book, I think it was a necessity because we talked about it, the way that that story was kind of crammed together and they jumped from that issue to the next event. Yeah. This next. gives a closure to that. Yeah. And kind of it, 
this is a, a, a serious situation, right? This is a monumental thing. Think about when Superman died. Not to say Pennyworth is Superman, but when Superman died, we had an entire issue for a funeral. Um, but think of the backlog, the, the, you know, Alfred's existence. I mean, you don't know Batman without Alfred. Right. Bruce Wayne so, without Alfred. So it, there needed to be a pause. It felt like, it really felt like when he died, there needed to be a pause. There needed to be a acknowledgement. And that's where maybe some of my criticism came in. It's like, well, there, we're not going to do that, but then you want me to feel some sort of way about it. But to take now this issue and do it, um, I think was a, was a good move. It's well received. You knew some of the names involved. It was going to be good. Um, I like the fact that it's very conversational. Um, I think that that kind of gives it the humanity that you yeah. want when you're talking about a situation like this. Yeah, and it kind of and it, it kind of hits you in the feels, especially at the end um, when Grayson is telling Bruce Wayne kind of a story about Alfred that. Uh, no one really knew before, but yeah, it was good. I definitely recommend you pick it up and give it a read if you haven't. But the last book we're going to talk about on the reader buzz is that Star Wars Rise of Kylo Ren number three. Yeah, so this like broke the trend of, I guess, the book coming out on release day and being a 10 to $15 book. It's a cover price book. Having said that, it's sold out at retail level. Um, at distributor level, uh, it's going to a second print that's already been announced. Um, number two got announced as well today, going to a third print. Uh, so this is a series that just is being extremely well received by readers, by Star Wars fans. I think the amount of Star Wars comic readers and Star Wars comic kind of collectors and buyers is growing incrementally. I think that whether it's Disney Plus having something to do with it. I know like the hardcore fans complain about the newer movies, but I got to be honest with you. The newer movies are much, much more accessible. Or I don't even want to say more accessible. They're just successfully accessible to like children and new fans to pick it up um, and to enjoy the Star Wars universe. And that's why we're seeing the brand grow um, and be continuously successful. But I would say keep an eye out for this issue because um, it could be one that's selling for 10 to $15 like one and two, and it may just take more time to get there. Uh, and the one in 25 variant, you're seeing a lot of sales of it today. I mean, a lot. So I'm looking at it. It's selling for about 25 plus shipping, about $30. Unless you're on Midtown, they're asking 40. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, it's, so it's selling for about slightly over, um, you know, uh, ratio, but it's selling at such a clip that I think it's going to dry up this. So this is a book to keep an eye out for because we've seen this with so many star Wars books and they always are issue three or four, right? Yep. They're always like some random issue. Once the attention gets taken away from it, or once retailers have caught up to the, like the ordering pattern that they need to be on in order to catch this secondary market heat. And uh, then that's when the books get kind of overordered. But I, Wait on this one a month or two. I think you could be looking at this one selling for 50, 60, 70. We've seen that time and time again. Well, we well, during the conversations about this series on Last Call and everything else, you've asked, when do you think that that release day heat will die down on this series? And you got your mm -hmm. answer. Yep. So it is, guys. That wraps up the reader buzz section. Real quick, before we get into that variant buzz, do us a favor, click that thumbs up button. <coughs> haven't done so already coffin <laughs> and if you haven't done so already make sure you click that subscribe button so you'll be notified when future videos drop on this channel with that being said let's roll right into that variant buzz section kicking off the variant buzz section we have box office blunder no wait a minute we have Birds of Prey number one, but we're talking about that Derek Chu variant. Yeah, and you know what? This one actually, with the way it was well-received today, probably could be on the reader buzz list. This has actually been a well-liked book. Um, and very similar to Birds of Prey, which has actually been a pretty well-liked movie, to be honest with you, by most people who watch it. Yeah, people it. that have seen it are liking yeah, it. Yeah, are liking it. The, the, really, I think the, the mistakes surrounding that movie are marketing. And I think that, yes, it's going to impact these comics. Um, it, you know, 
and part of this is you know this is this is also important to know this is another um amanda connor jimmy palmiotti book um versus i know there's a lot of there's a lot of naysayers out there right there's some people who love i mean just love them as a duo for harley quinn um and are passionate about them as a duo for harley quinn and then there's some and i am in the second category who prefer other people to you know some of the other people's take on the character um so i think that plays into it some but also like these are black label releases black label just doesn't miss the mark and i think cover a has kind of a cool look to it but this cover b chew variant um these chew variants have been well received i think this one it's kind of on par with some of his other stuff and you know it got it's one of those things like is it going to be a big secondary market book no but every time a book like this gets released it's going to be on the variant buzz section because it's going to get shared that image is going to get shared all over social media the vampirella magazine number one this is that replica edition of that 1969 cover right right yeah and you know this one's a tough one to gauge because like it's selling out at retail level um not a lot of activity per se on ebay uh there's some sales seem to be kind of the pricing is all over the place but it, what's really tough about it is you mentioned this to me when we discussed covering it on last call and we opted not to um facsimiles are cool this is a total facsimile a facsimile of a magazine size book which i think is extra cool um but the issue is that they've re-released this book several times so um as far as long-standing value this is like i think this is cover e they called it so um as far as long-standing value that's going to be kind of difficult i don't know what the dear and i don't and i'm ignorant to it i'll admit that so if there's any dynamite comics experts out there some vampirella experts are what are the differences of the re replica editions that they've done um i mean it is an iconic cover but yeah 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 my original reaction to seeing it was well we need to talk about this because this is super cool and then you kind of schooled me that this had been released and i did some research I'm like wow yeah this has been released several times um like so, not too long ago i believe they released one almost yearly yeah it's for the last several years they've released um now th and i don't know this this may be more say of a facsimile than past releases i don't know because they bragged about like the advertising and things like that but you know it could just be this is a yearly cash and for them either way i think because facsimiles are popular right now a lot of people who did see this and this wasn't isn't a book you're going to see on every retail shelf let's be honest but i think those who did see it were picking it up yeah next one we're talking about is a book we don't talk about much on this show and that is sonic the hedgehog number 25 but there's an one in 10, but there's also a one in 25 incentive for this. Yeah, and I think the, the popularity for, or not, I don't wanna say popularity, but the- The movie the, released this weekend? Or? Yeah, the, there's a couple things. Number one, yes, I do think that the, the movie timing um, plays largely into it. Um, I think though that the other, the other major factor is the fact that, we've talked about this on the channel, this is a one in 25 variant. This is a, a one in 25 variant. Um, there's a one in 10 for this. This is a title that does not do one in 25s. They did when they first kicked off the series. And yeah, one in 50 or one in, one in 100. Yeah. The problem was it was a confusing system. It was a really cool system for retailers. Um, didn't really pan out for collectors because they didn't know how to value these books. Um, a few IDW series, what they did was they allowed retailers to get an incentive for number one based on their orders for the first four issues. So if you ordered 25 copies of issue one, issue two, issue three, and issue four, you get, you'd get 25 copies, you'd get two one in tens for, for each book, and then you'd get a one in 100 of number one because you ordered 100 copies over the first four. Um, and that didn't necessarily do that well. Uh, because people realized there were more of them out there than you would typically. That was like two years ago, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we're on issue twenty-five, so it was about it was about two years ago. Um, and when they originally came out, a lot they were popular. They were going for over a hundred dollars because 
you know, they don't do a lot of these. This isn't something that's commonly done. Um, so there was a lot of kind of anticipation that, well, this could be something, um, this could be something valuable. And once people realized like, oh, you can make money off this, people started finding them at their retail stores and the market just got flooded with these. This is a different story. Like you could, I bet you there's far less of this one in 25 variant. Especially issue number 25. 25, right. So the, I saw this one coming. This is one of those things that I, this is my type of book. When we talk about like, I, I don't want to run with the big dogs. I don't want to chase the same thing everybody else is doing. I'm, I, what I enjoy um, when it comes to say flipping variants, if the, the variant section, that tends to be what it is. The reader buzz section, that's when you're buying books for yourself, right? That you really want. The variant section, there's a lot more selling involved. And when, I, when I'm doing that, this is the type of book I pay attention to. Um, the last sale on eBay is $38.99. And there's none. There's one combo copy up for auction where it's a 1 in 10 and a 1 in 25. And there's nothing else. And the auction may not do that well. Putting a book like this up for auction is not real smart because there's not a ton of people out there trying to get it. You're really trying to play big fish in a small pond, but you know, this is a book you're not going to hear a lot of YouTube channels talk about. You're not going to see a lot of Instagram accounts talking about it, but the people who know the people who pay attention to this stuff, they were on this one. This is one I was all over. This is one um, that I've been paying attention to. And we've talked about it on the channel and we like to be transparent and give you that info. Pay attention to these one in 25 IDWs, especially in a situation like this, because you're almost, and I don't want to say you're guaranteed to do well, but it just consistently time and time again, these books dry up. Think about the um, Usagi Yohimbo, what was it, uh, number six, that Jeff Garo variant. That was a similar kind of situation. Yeah, you talk about that one in 100 number one issue. Mm -hmm. There was also, I don't know if it was a GameStop exclusive, but there was a Sonic board game that had like an even a similar cover to that one in 100, but it was like maybe different shade or something like mm -hmm. that but there was a sonic board game that had an exclusive comic in there and i wonder if there's less of those than the one in 100 because they printed a lot of those issues yeah i i would i wouldn't be honestly i wouldn't be shocked at all um i've seen certain issues where the one in 25 then once people like the there's a star trek one uh where the one in 100 goes for less than the one in 25 yeah. significantly Either way, I know my kids have been hounding me, and this weekend I'll be taking them to see Sonic the movie. All right. Then the next book we're going to talk about on that variant buzz is that Marvel Action Spider Man. This is volume two, issue number one, one and 10. And this is one that more people kind of anticipated being a positive play. And hasn't necessarily been a big one. It's selling it's still a about, gorgeous cover by Sanford Green, though. Really is. It's selling for about fifteen dollars, um, which again is one point five times ratio. So it's still on the positive side. It's a Spider Gwen solo cover. Here's why I like it. Um, one is a personal reason. One will say is for uh, kind of collectible reasons. From the collectible standpoint, um, I. It, I think Spider Gwen is going to be Ghost Spider is going to be one of the biggest characters out for years to come, and I think because of that, these this is going to be one of those variants that like there isn't a ton out there, and it's, you see with Venom like collectors they'll pay whatever. This is one you're not going to get an initial pop for, but down the road you could. From a personal standpoint, Sanford Green is a Carolina guy. I like him doing this because I know he's you know friendly and very familiar with the creators of spider gwen spider gwen was uh created in charlotte so uh, they all do local conventions around my area um consistently so it's kind of cool to see like a carolina family member do this this uh cover featuring spider gwen when i saw that they announced sanford green was doing the variant for this book but they didn't have the cover art yet i kind of hoped it was going to be a spider gwen cover i gotta get used to saying ghost spider but a ghost spider cover but uh but yeah, so I like Sanford Green's art. He's another one of those artists, though, that's like hit or miss. Some people don't like him. 
but uh, I've always been a big fan. Yeah, and then staying in the Spider Verse, but going from IDW into like that Gamer Verse, we get that Marvel Black Cat Strikes Back number two. One in 25, Nakayama variant, right? Yeah, speaking of artists that I'm a big fan of, David Nakayama is awesome. By the way, shout out to him. He liked the Bolo list uh, both on, I think, Twitter and Instagram. Um, but he uh, he killed this cover. Uh, it's an absolute standout cover. It's funny because this is one of those ones when I was like reviewing books to order, um, I hadn't even thought about this book. And then I saw that cover instantly was like, on the fence, is this just a cover I like or are other people going to like this cover? I actually passed on it. I just thought, well, I tend to like David Nakayama's art a lot. Um, you know, I was like, ah, I don't think I need one for the PC. I'll pass on it. And then sure enough, sold out everywhere. Um, and has been, you know, an above ratio selling book. Um, because again, these gamer books aren't huge ordered. Yeah, I, I tend to like the, the gamer verse books, but that's mostly for PC mm-hmm. just because I've, that Sony, the PS4 game, all you Xbox lovers out there. But that PS4 Spider-Man game was freaking amazing. So anything game reverse, especially with Spider-Man, I end up picking up just, just because it, I love the stories wrapped around it and anything, anything that comes close to that video game. But moving on, this next book we're going to talk about, I'm going to have to eat a little crow on because when we talked about this on the last call, I was like, not for it. But I gave it a read. And we're talking about Nebula number one. But on here, we're talking about the Robinson and Indolfo variants, right? <clears throat> right, Brian. So we're talking about the 1 in 25 variant and the 1 in 50 variant, um, uh, respectively. Now, the funny thing is, the Robinson variant I saw got posted a lot. And there's been kind of like a polarizing response to it. People either really like it or really hate it. Um, and then Indolfo is one of those artists, I think, she's like riding that kind of like Peach Momoko train where she's like, increasingly popular um not quite to the level yeah not quite to the level of peach momoko but kind of in that ballpark could be the you know uh, a cover or two away could be after mercy um she's certainly kind of like elevating through the ranks of independent comics so i think that that plays into it i think that these types of releases are a perfect way to introduce kind of big two kind of collectors and fans to those kinds of uh people so this was more of a variant thing wasn't wasn't a lot of people talking about nebula um it'll be interesting to see especially like the high ratio a lot of when you go back and look at like some of those big time variants that sell for big time you know dollars years later but you start looking at titles like moon knight and electra and um things that like weren't heavily ordered gamora um so nebula could fit into that uh we'll have to wait and see and the last one we're going to talk about on that variant buzz section is that Marvel Tales Wolverine number one. This is the, what, the one in 50 Nihak Lee variant? Yeah, this is the winner of the week. If you were trying to make like immediate ROI, you're talking about about $200 on your last sale. Um, there's That's only crazy. One, yeah, there's two books listed right now. One for 200. Um, one is a VF for 150. It seems like there's a lot of VFs. There was several VFs sold today for 100 to 150. Um, so I think the shipping was maybe a little rough on this book from Diamond. Was it square but bound? It, it's not square bound. It's just it's oversized. Yeah. It's you know so it's yeah you know, it's putting a lot of stress on that that cover paper. And it's black, right? I think yeah, dark, navy dark. blue black kind of yeah. yeah. Nighttime thunder yeah. lightning type scene. So easy to get scuffed and uh, yeah, gorgeous cover. Um, but it seems to be just that's just something I was noticing just from the books that got listed today. Um, and it's one of those books that escalated as the day went. You think about those first people who sold it and got 120, they probably felt like really good about it. It's about a one in 50 variant, but again, we also I brought this up every single time $200 is awesome, but it costs you $200 to buy this book to buy enough of the regular book. So you're, you, you're broke even now just by selling this book for 200. That's great. Now you got 50 Marvel Tales trade dress Wolverine that you got to sell for something to make your profit. But if you sell them for a buck each, you made $50, you made 25% profit. Maybe you're happy. I don't know. But um, as far as a variant, if you were able to pre-order this, if you got a friendly deal with an LCS, I think he's crazy. But if he's Selling it to you for 50 bucks. If you sell them to you at ratio, you know, you did extremely well. Um, 
I saw some people surprised that this book did well, and I'm a little surprised that people are surprised because at this point, I feel like we've been talking about these Marvel Tales books for a year, whether it's Jen Bartel or Indy Ak Lee. Um, it seems like these Virgin covers do extremely, extremely well, and it, they just never seem to. Um, You're just waiting, but yeah, but people are waiting for that well to dry out. It has it to happen, but we expected it to happen. We started to see it happen with Jen Bartel, and then Marvel got smart and switched to Indy Ak Lee. And if they're smart again, honestly, they should keep doing these um, because clearly people are ordering them. And and anytime it starts to dry up, just switch the cover artist. But you gotta you gotta come with the best. If they could do it again with Inhyuk Lee, right when it gets dry, switch to Peach Momoko and watch what happens. Side note: before we get to the next one, I think the Inhyuk Lee market is gonna dry up soon with him doing DC cover Bs yeah. more consistently. That has and no disrespect to DC, but that's killed a lot of artists because then their their artwork becomes Matina. Super, yes, it's super accessible instead of being one in fifty variants all the Our time. Term. Yeah, yeah, one in fifty variants. It, they become it just easy, accessible. Adam Hughes is another one. You, you can just Gabriel Delato. We're seeing, uh, yeah. you know, it, they become if you can buy it every week for four dollars, and it's just purely a cover art thing. It's very hard then to, for a one in fifty to seem like something special. Yeah. So that wraps up the variant buzz section. Real quick, before we get into Jack's long term play, I want to backtrack up to that reader buzz section for a minute. There was a book that I read that wasn't on the list that I kind of wanted to just talk about. There was another. We we're talking about this in Patreon Discord chat before it came out. Came out today. Read it. And it's from AfterShock, and it's called Undone by Blood. Pick that up today. Heck of a story. Heck of a first issue. Pure reader buzz. I'm just saying it like that. But I enjoyed that. It was, had that whole part Western part. We've talked about this before, how I like period pieces. But then I also like revenge stories. And here it is. You got this female and uh, female protagonist. And she wants revenge for people that killed her family. And she's like, doesn't give a damn about it. She's going into bars, not scared to go up to anyone, talk shit, trying to find out, hey, what do you know about the murder? And getting in fights, she gets her ass kicked a couple times. But either way, Undone by Blood from Aftershock. If you're looking for a great story, definitely pick up issue number one for that. And with that being said, now time for the long-term play. So here you have it. We're at the end. We got Jack's long-term play like we do every week. We talked a little bit about this title on this week's Three Up, Three Down, where we cover those hot and cold comic market trends. But Venom number 23, you're talking Scotty Young. A lot of times we sit there and poke fun at these baby variants, but this one's a hit, right, Jack? Yeah, this one's a big hit. Um, and this one is a hit for all the reasons I'm going to talk about. Like Nothing I think I say um is going to surprise people this may be one of my least controversial long-term plays which is a little bit surprising because i don't know if i ever thought i'd be picking a scotty young baby variant for a long-term play although i did talk last night on the um on three up three down as you mentioned about you know the kind of increased value we've seen in the market for scotty young artwork uh, just across the board due to his just overwhelming popularity but this is really about Donny Cates' popularity. No disrespect to Ryan Stegman, who's also uh, featured on the cover. This is really and truly about the fact that um, Donny Cates is an absolute monster um, on the secondary market. Everything that he creates is getting bought up by investors, collectors, speculators, really everybody, readers. Um, so this cover depicting him on the cover has that kind of kitschy buzz that um, collectors just seem to think is cool. It also makes for such amazing um, signature opportunities. And we're coming into con season. It's kind of well-timed. Donny Cates is super accessible. He just announced today he's going to be at MegaCon um, in Orlando in April. Um, he does all the big major conventions. Uh, so signature opportunities for Donny Cates are there. He's usually with Ryan Stegman. Ryan Stegman is another person who's pretty accessible. Scotty Young used to be extremely accessible. He's less accessible now, but he is out there. So this is a, a triple signature that absolutely can be had. Um, and 
I think that this is a, a book that people are going to rush to do. I also made the comment on the written article on simplemanscomics.com where we ha have the bolo list um, and I and I do kind of a little um, write up on my feeling on the uh, long-term play of the week. And a lot of it's kind of different opinions than what I say here. So you should check that out on a weekly basis. Also, like this week, it was up far before it was on any other social media platform. Um, but this, this is... It, it's really a, a kind of a case of people's love for Donny Cates. Uh, people are going to be all over this book. Um, people are going to have Ryan Stegman and Scotty Young use that like white cover to do some awesome remarks. Um, I think that there's, there's value in it for that reason. And then why did it happen? Right? Like, because this is one of those books as an open order variant, you would think, well, retailers would have been prepared, right? They would have ordered a million of this. It's, it's a no brainer. Why is this going for $20 right now on eBay? Um, the day of release of a Scotty Young cover B. Well, it's simple. The, the cover art wasn't there. So we've seen this happen before where that cover art gets solicited, uh, where the, the book gets solicited. We just see Scotty Young variant. And I know every retailer probably thought the same thing. They were like, okay, well, I need to order these because people do buy these Scotty Young especially Venom variants. Um, they've, if you actually, if you go back, I said this to Brian yesterday, um, just about every Venom Scotty Young variant is an above cover price book. But here we are, the day of release, and it's a $20 book. And it's largely because of that kind of mentality that retailers have no choice but to order. We talk about it with FOC on the last call show. Um, they've got to get those orders in and they've got to use the information they've got. And if you don't have that image, if all you know is the artist and you've got to kind of go on an assumption, if they would have known Donny Cates was going to be depicted on this cover, they may have upped their order. If they would have had time to see how the market reacted specifically, because the second this cover got announced, it was shared all over social media Everyone knew this was going to be a popular book, but it's the long-term play of the week because I actually think this book has room to grow. I think this book is going to get slabbed. I think there's going to be less and less of this book available on the market. I think this book is going to be put into PCs. It's going to it cross sections a lot of people. I think Venom collectors are going to have to have it for their variant collection. I think Donny Cates fans are going to have to have it. Um, I think Scott Young fans are going to have to have it. And anytime you've got multiple pools dipping into the same source you have room for growth within a book um so this is a book i think is solid long-term growth on top of it i just think it's cool for the same reasons i thought that that thor number four or was it king thor number four um del mundo jason aaron book was cool because i just think that paying tribute to a writer who has done so much for that character in that way um is pretty unique we have seen this done before, though, by Scotty Young. He actually had Brian Michael Bendis on the cover of a book once, and that did literally nothing on the secondary market. So that gives you an idea of the difference in popularity between Brian Michael Bendis and Donny Cates. But for those reasons, and oh so many more, this is my long-term play of the week. Yeah, you mentioned that. I, I was a little bit butthurt at this, at this cover because, like you mentioned, that Del Mundo variant for Jason Aaron, I, I was like, how come that one didn't get as much attention? That's just me and, and my personal and, love. Well, let's be yeah. honest, such a better cover. Yeah. Um, and no disrespect, like the, the Scotty Young baby variants are cool, but that Del Mundo cover is amazing. Um, but yeah, and I will also concede, like we talked about how um, I kind of liked some of the baby variants before when it was kind of early and new and then just kind of wore it. It was like those Mike McCone headshot variants, man. You got sick of those really, really yeah. quick. But then this cover just kind of, I won't say redefines it, but it just, it fits so much better than what you normally see from a baby variant with Stegman and Donny Cates and uh, kind of like a Calvin and Hobbes or a Winnie the Pooh type feel to it that ties to the story that's going to make it wanted by multiple collectors, Venom collectors, Donny Cates collectors. And we talked about on the three up, three down, how Scotty Young has one hell of a following. So you got all people going for it. And like you said, it was kind of under order because they yeah. didn't see the art. We had multiple people commenting today between Patreon, Discord, or social media. Hey, I went to my shop. And they had one cover on the on on the self shelf when it freaking opened. So, yeah, and that, I mean, it really doesn't surprise me at all. At all, at all. I wouldn't expect stores to have just based on Scotty Young Venom variant alone ordered too much. Um, more than like I said, just a few to have for those collectors. So yeah, heck of a long term play, Jack and. 
like we mentioned at the beginning of this video, we do have a giveaway. Now we talk about independent comics on this channel a lot. We talk about a bunch of different publishers, but one publisher we talked about quite a few times as well is Black Box Comics. They've put out some great comics, right, Jack? Yeah, yeah. I, I mentioned it from the get-go. One of their first releases um, that I came across was a book, Militia, by Chuck Dixon. It had a very G.I. Joe feel. Um, Psycho List is one that, that really did a lot on the secondary market. It was uh, very successful. And they just dropped Project Icarus, who we talked about, like, what, a week ago? Yep. And I work in IT. They have an IT comic book. So, hey, bunch of great. So here's what's going to happen. Black Box was nice enough. They sent us some books. And we're going to pass that on to you, the viewer. So all you're going to have to do to win these books from Black Box is, one, make sure you click that thumbs up for us. And comment in the video, not in the chat. If you guys are in the live chat right now, make sure you comment after the video is done. What small publisher in 2020 are you guys liking or looking forward to? Put that in the comments. We'll pick a random person and we'll announce it on next week's Bolo show who the winner is. With that being said, this is Brian and Jack with Simple Man's Comics and we'll see you in the next video.